So go ahead and take out your graphic calculator. We're going to look at the first set of equations and we're going to answer questions about them and their graphs as we go. So you're going to use the graphing calculator to graph these two equations right here. So we're going to put into that graph y equals x plus 5. So to do that, you hit the y equals key. And then you're going to hit x plus 5. x is right here under the word mode. Your x should still be somewhere near there. Hold on. So you have x plus 5. It's right under the word mode. And then we're going to type in negative 2x plus 5 for the second equation. So you're going to hit enter. That will take you to the line below. Don't hit minus. You need to hit the negative. So the negative's down here. So negative 2x plus 5. Okay, so then to graph this, you're going to hit the word zoom right here in the middle, and then 6. So you hit zoom in the middle, and then the number 6. Did you guys make sure you hit negative at the bottom and not minus? And did you hit the X under the word mode? All right, make sure I hit Y equals again, and I'll check, make sure everything looks good. Sorry, dear. All right, moral of the story is how many times do these graphs hit each other? Once. So go back to your paper and it says, Do the graphs have any points in common? If so, how many? Well, you just told me they have. One point in common. Compare the slopes of those lines. Are the slopes of these lines the same or different? Different. So they have different slopes and one point in common. So it says, what is the relationship between the slopes of the lines and the number of points in common? So they have different slopes and one point in common. Now we're going to look at example B. So we're going to go back to Y equals, and we're going to type over what we already had. So you have Y equals again. This time you're typing in 3X plus 2. And then you're typing in 3X minus 1. Does everybody Y equal look like that? Your equal signs need to be highlighted. You could turn off your plots. That's why some of you are having errors. Now hit graph. How many times do these graphs hit? Never. Because they're parallel. Yeah. Uh, you got the y along the line, so the graph. Yep. So it says, do the graphs have any points in common? If so, how many? 
They have no points in common. They have the same slope. And once again, none. How come on? No, it's not the calculator. <laughs> okay, y equals for the last one. So try this one with us. Clear it all out. So start with nothing. And y1, type in negative 4x minus 2. So negative comes from down here, not the minus. So negative 4 x under mode minus 2. And then the second one is a fraction. So in order to do that, you have to put the 8x plus 4 all in parentheses. So it would be parentheses 8x plus 4, close parentheses. A division bar on the calculator is the same as the dividing key. And then negative 2. So it needs to look like that for y1 and y2. Now hit grab. Because, like, you missed that when yours was messed up before. Because that centers it. So, we see how many lines? That is correct. Why? Well, if you compare these equations, if you take negative 2 and you rewrite it under both terms, what is 8 divided by negative 2? And 4 divided by negative 2? So when you simplify this, you get negative 4x minus 2, and you're comparing it to negative 4x minus 2. So they are the same line. So when you're graphing it, what's happening is the graphing calculator is graphing it once, and then it's graphing it twice, right on top of the other graph. So you're only seeing one line, because when you graph them, even though their equations are different, technically, they simplify to the same. So it says, do the graphs have any points in common? If so, how many? How many points would they have in common? So you didn't type it incorrectly. Check your y equals. Did you put parentheses around 8x plus 4? Yeah. Did you divide by negative 2, not yeah. 2? I'll look. Compare the slopes. So if they're the same line, when we simplified our slopes, they were... So taking those A, B, and C from above, we can now describe these lines as intersecting, parallel, and coinciding. So the idea is that when we compare these, their, li it's plus four. their lines are the same. So example A or warm-up A is an example of intersecting. Example B from the warm-up is an example of parallel lines. And an example C from the warm-up is an example of coinciding lines. So when we graphed A, we graphed intersecting lines. We said the graph of A had how many points in common? One. The slopes of the intersecting lines were different. 
and their y-intercepts could be either. They could be the same or different. In our example, they were the same. We're going to look at other examples today where they're different. Parallel lines had how many points in common? Parallel lines have the same slope, but different y-intercepts. Parallel lines cannot have the same y-intercept because if parallel lines have the same y-intercept, they're no longer parallel. They are coinciding because coinciding means like smacked on top of each other. How many points of intersection? All equals slopes. Yup. Same y-intercepts. Yup. Because they're the same line. So chapter three is on what we call a system of equations. So in all of chapter one, we looked at linear equations and we looked at one equation at a time. We had one line on our graph. Now we're going to look at a system of equations which means like our graphical example on the calculator, we're going to have more than one line on a graph. A linear system of equations is a system of equations that have all lines when we graph them together. All three warm-up examples today were linear systems. All three warm-up examples today were linear systems. The solution to a system of equations is the intersection of the lines. The solution to a system of equations is the intersection of the lines. Do parallel lines have a solution? Do parallel lines intersect? So parallel lines have no solution. Systems of equations are described in one of three ways. They are independent, dependent, or inconsistent. An independent system has one solution. So think of the word independent. If you're independent of other people, you're kind of by yourself, right? You're doing it alone. So an independent system has one solution. An independent system has one solution. A dependent system. So you guys are dependent of your parents. Your families have many people. Dependent means many, 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 many solutions. Because you're depending on something else. And an inconsistent system is a system that has no solutions. So if someone's an inconsistent friend, they might hang out with you sometimes, they might not. You never know. So they're that no solution because they just nothing. That's the parallel lines. Parallel lines are inconsistent. Parallel lines are inconsistent. So what we're going to do today is classify lines. So we have three types of classifications, just like we had three warm-up graphs. So we're going to have three potential answers for our homework problems. A system of equations is either going to be intersecting, coinciding, or parallel. Systems of equations are either going to be intersecting, coinciding, or parallel.
So this little blurb is at the top of the next page for you. You have the graphs. So what I like is you can see the graphs. You can see an example. And then we always classify lines in systems of equations three ways. You're going to classify the system as independent, dependent, or inconsistent. You're going to describe the line as parallel, coinciding, or intersecting. And then you are also going to describe the number of solutions, either as one, infinite, or none. So one, infinitely many, or none. Parallel, coinciding, intersecting, independent, dependent, inconsistent. So let's look at a system of equations. We don't need to graph them because all we need to do is compare their slopes and y-intercepts. So what we're going to do is get both equations in our favorite form, y equals mx plus v. So the top equation is rather nice. It's already in that form, right? Done. But we need to change the bottom equation. So we're going to solve for y. So we're going to take the bottom equation and solve for y. So if you have negative 6x plus 2y equals 4, and I want to solve for y, the first thing I'm going to do is add 6x to both sides. Y is being multiplied by 2, so I need to Six divided by two is? Four divided by two is? So we get y equals three x plus two. You compare this equation to the other equation by comparing their slopes and their y-intercepts. Their slopes are the? Their y-intercepts are the? Therefore, we have the same line, right? Just written different ways. So that means that this is an example of coinciding. So when it asks you to classify, you classify the types of lines. So the lines are coinciding. You de determine the number of solutions. So how many solutions does coinciding lines have? An infinite amount, right? So they have infinitely many solutions. And then you describe the type of system. So is it independent, dependent, or inconsistent? Dependent. Because dependent is many. Number two. Get both equations in y equals mx plus b. So here we just have to, yeah, what's up, hon? What would it be what? No, because they're coinciding. So literally the lines sit right on top of each other. And the solutions are the points they have in common. So they have all points in common. So it's infinite solutions because you can't decide. That says no unique. So I sort of cross it out and write infinitely many. Okay. I was confused. I was like, yeah, no unique means like not one particular. Like there are a bajillion. It's true. There's no, like there's no unique because there's a million. All right. Second equation, subtract over 15x, so you have 5y equals negative 15x plus 2. 
Divide everything by five. So when you divide by five, you divide each part independently because you really want to be able to simplify the slope on the x value. So you get y equals negative 3x plus 2 fifths. So now compare the slopes. The slopes of these lines are the same. So the slopes are the same. After you compare your slopes, you compare the y-intercept. The y-intercepts are different. So same slope, different y-intercept means that my lines are, Lucas? Parallel. So they don't ever hit each other, right? So if they don't ever hit each other, how many solutions? None. None. So I have parallel lines. You can always think of the word parallel. It has like the double L in it. The L's never hit each other. So parallel lines look like their word is spelled. And that's how you know the double L's sit by each other. So it's not double, double R. Everybody tries to make parallel have double R's, double L's, because it's the line. Everybody does that. I don't know why. Parallel has double L because the lines don't cross. So parallel, they have no solution. Are you laughing at my dad? Or did you miss what I said? Okay, parallel, no solution. What type of system? Fantastic. <laughs> Can't get my teeth. I think I finally mastered the board, by the way. I have the way you writing. I had to get good at writing like that, though. All right, y equals 2x plus 3. So the top equation is good. We're done. The bottom equation we have to solve, right? So we are going to add 4x to both sides. So you get 2y equals 4x plus 6. Divide everything by 2. And once again, when I simplify, what do I get? Coinciding. So because <laughs> they're 2x plus 3 and 2x plus 3. So we have coinciding infinite Which is dependent. She's laughing, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Sometimes I can't tell. <laughs> Don't say that. I add numbers wrong all the time. Literally, like yesterday, I said. Like 2 divided by negative 1 was 2 instead of making it negative 2. Like on my video. So you're fine. I can't add and subtract some days. All right. X minus Y equals 5. Subtract X. Divide by negative 1. You cannot leave a negative on the y, so you have to divide everything by negative 1. So we get y equals x minus 5. And then over here, we're going to solve this equation for y. So we just have to subtract over our 3. 
So we get y equals 2x minus 3. Compare your slopes. So are the slopes the same or different? Okay, so slopes are different. The minute my slopes are different, I only have one choice. Intersecting. Intersecting lines have how many solutions? One, because they only cross each other once. That point where they hit each other, that's the solution. Intersecting are also independent. Intersecting, independent, one solution. Can't fit independent down there. So again, you can see these types of lines with graphs, you can see them with equations. So guess what your homework is? Graphs and equations. Now be careful on the homework. So go ahead and look at that. In number four, there are two lines on that graph. I see. So do you see like the arrows? Like there is a line this way and this way. So in number four, there are two lines. So if you need to bold the horizontal line, you need to bold the horizontal line. First time I did that one, I missed them. Same with six. Yeah, six, there's two lines on six as well. Yeah. I feel like I meant to delete the roll already. You're welcome. So, yes, I'm going to leave this up on the board for you while you look at your homework right now. That way you can see it, spell it. You don't have to keep flipping back and forth in your notes. You have about six minutes um, to get started on.